Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, we're gonna to talk about something that I think is extremely valuable, and that is the single best piece of advice that I could give to any scientist. So I think that there's a lot out there in terms of qualities that you're gonna to need to succeed as a scientist, such as being smart, being curious, hardworking. You know, those are all kinds of things that you already know. But what is, in my opinion, the best piece of advice that I could give to any scientist at practically any stage of their career? That's what we're gonna talk about today. So to talk about this, I kinda of wanna bring in a personal story and take you all the way back to when I was a kid. I had a couple of neighbors, one that lived next door to me and one that lived across the street from me. And I loved playing basketball with them. But they were a few years older than me. In one case, they were actually several years older than me. And they would always crush me. No matter how hard I tried, they would always beat me every single time. And I remember the best piece of advice I've ever received my whole life came from my dad during that time when I told him, you know, I really don't like playing with them anymore. They're always beating me by a lot. It's hard to win. And he told me, you're never gonna get any better at playing basketball if you're playing with people that are just as good as you or that are even worse than you. The only way you're gonna get better is if you consistently play with people that are better than you. And that was something I took to heart and whether it was sports or academics or anything else in life, I've always tried to surround myself with other people that I thought were better than me in whatever activity I was doing. So if I was doing sports, you know, who was the best basketball player? I wanted to be with that. If it was in school, who was the smartest kid in the class or group of kids in the class? I wanted to study with them. And that's something I've tried to do through most of my life, including marrying my wife, who I think is as smarter than me and, and more successful in life than me. I try to stay with her, you know, she boosts me up. So I think that's probably the best piece of advice that I could give to any scientist in their career, but especially ones that are starting out, is don't be the smartest person in the room. Don't be afraid to be surrounded by people that are smarter than you, or that maybe even work harder than you, or that, you know, are the ones that could just sit there for 10 minutes and study and, and they get a perfect A on the, on the test, you know? Don't be afraid of that. And this is something that's gonna have to follow you through your whole career. So for example, you know, don't be afraid to spend time talking with PIs that are very seasoned. Even if those PIs are kind of grisly and you may not want them on your grad school committee and your thesis committee, add them anyways, because they're the ones that are gonna test you over and over and over again. And I promise you that if you're willing to go out there and say, these are the three PIs that I think in my department are the hardest to deal with, but they bring the most to the table and you put them on your defense committee, even though it's gonna be harder through the process, when you're done, you're going to come out a much better scientist. You're going to be smarter. You're gonna really know how to think through things and you're gonna be prepared for the next stage. And same thing as you move into your postdoc, don't be afraid to work with the smartest postdocs, to get involved with the PIs that are the most challenging. Don't ever be afraid to do that. If you become a PI or you go into industry later or whatever career, same piece of advice. And it doesn't matter how seasoned you are. You know, even if you've been a PI for 10, 15, 20 years, there's still probably a PI around that knows more than you, that's published more than you, that has more funding than you. Don't be afraid to surround yourself with those that are smarter than you. Don't ever, ever, ever be the smartest person in the room. That's the best piece of advice that I could give to you. Now, this is would be a really short video if that was the only piece of advice that I could give you. So I wanna give you one other piece of advice that I think is something that people kind of overlook and need to actually reflect themselves and think about. And that is the fact that science and your career is not a sprint. It's a marathon, okay? Yeah, it's nice if you could finish your PhD in three years instead of four years, because then that means you get to just that much faster move to a postdoc. And if you do your postdoc in three years instead of four years, it means you get to advance to the next stage in your career faster. And like, that's good and all, but you know, you're really only saving a year or two here or there. And in the grand scheme of things, it's not that much. Don't rush. Make sure to take your time. Really go through your PhD and learn everything you need to learn. Same with your postdoc. Once you get to your postdoc, don't just leave because you want to leave. 
Certainly there's different, you know, factors such as if you're like me and you're in Boston, it's extremely expensive to live here. It's hard to be a postdoc for so long because you just don't make enough money to, to support a family here. But um, for most people, you need to be there until you feel like you've learned everything that you can, that you've squeezed every bit of information and career development and growth out of that position that you can. Because once you leave, you can't go back to that position. You know, once you leave your PhD and you do your defense and you move on to a postdoc, you're a PhD at that point. It doesn't matter whether you're a new postdoc or you're a faculty member. They're gonna have a certain expectation for what you know and can do. So don't just rush through if you feel like you're not ready yet to move through. Same thing once you finally make it through and you, for example, go into industry and you become a, a scientist in industry. Don't just try to race through it, okay? You need to take your time. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Those are the two biggest pieces of advice that I could give to everybody that's watching this, particularly the first one. So if you take your time and you learn everything you can at each stage and really think about how can I grow myself? What am I supposed to be doing at this stage of my career to grow? Is it learning to do experimental techniques? Is it learning how to write papers? Is it learning how to manage others? Is it learning how to manage multiple projects at the same time? What am I supposed to be learning at this stage in my career? And how could I become as perfect at those skill sets as I can? And also while you're doing that, surrounding yourself with people that you think are doing better at those than you are and that you can learn from and that you kind of aspire to be, you're going to be set. You're going to continue to grow at an exponential rate and your growth is going to be much faster than those around you. And before long, you're going to rise and be part of that cream of the crop, if you will. So I hope those two pieces of advice are helpful to you. Certainly, they made a huge difference to me in my career development and my growth as a scientist. And they're things that I continue to do. And I'm, you know, even to this day, I still try to be you know, not the smartest person in the room. I always want to make sure there's somebody smarter and more developed and that I can learn from. I never want to be the smartest one in the room. So with that, I hope everyone has a really good long weekend. I know we just passed the Chinese New Year. So if you're someone that celebrates the Chinese New Year, have a happy new year and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.